Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Live with Sandra V. I'm Sandra, and Kenny V is here, but he is in the control center. Is that what you're calling it now? That's where he is in the control center. So he is going to be monitoring the comments for me and uh, letting me know if you all have any questions. But um, I want to let all of you know, most of you do know if you're here every week, that our goal is to inspire, educate, and promote others within the industry who share our same vision. And tonight, you can expect to be educated and inspired and have fun as we begin covering this cute little frame, eyeglass frame. <laughs> but before I get started, I just want to say hello to everybody. And if you are here for the first time, please let us know by typing in the comments below. I'm new. This is my first time. And for those of you who are here weekly visiting us, welcome back because we love having you here each and every week if it's a topic that you want to learn more about. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, please say hello to the new folks that are here too. You know, it's just really great to build a nice community. Um, and, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, Ken and I started doing something new. And we want to know where all of you are coming from. So if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and type in your name, your business name, and the city and state um, that you live in. Um, it's a, a good way for me to remember who everybody is. I know a lot of times someone might type in with their uh, business name and it's hard for me to put a name to the business. So um, I would like to kind of do both. Put your name to your business and business to your name. Okay, so please put that in there. And we are going to put a map on our wall and we're going to start putting pins where everyone's coming in here from because it's just really exciting. And then we're going to take a road trip. And so then we're going to. So I hope you guys got guest rooms. <laughs> That's right. Then we take road trips. We take a lot of trips. Sometimes too many trips. Um, but anyway, let us know that you're here to say, hey, I'm here, I'm here, hello, whatever. And uh, type all that information in. And above all, please share this out. Um, it, when you do that, it gives, face, uh, gives people a trigger, or Facebook triggers and puts it out there um, so others can come in and join us. I, I think I tell you this every week so many times. Folks will come in um, afterwards, and you can come in and watch the replay again, but uh, folks come in and they say, oh, you know, I missed it live and things like that. So please do that because it really, like I said, gets the Facebook triggering going. Okay. Um, let's see. So tonight um, we are going to begin covering um, this frame, like I mentioned. And I have to tell you, <laughs> The whole process has made me just smile, and I hope that it makes you smile too. I just think this smaller version is so cute, and uh, I made a larger version for the Artisan program. Uh, it was about a year ago, actually. Whoop, I got it caught up here. Um, and they were pretty big. I didn't even measure this. It's like 48 wide or something like that. Here, let me just hold it up here. So see, you can see it's... Uh, it's more like 60. Yeah, with like 60 wide. So they were pretty big, and they made me smile. But the little ones are cute. Wouldn't you agree? Tell me if you think they're cute. I'd like to know. <laughs> uh, and, you know, depending on uh, the purpose and how you make these, they can actually become somewhat of a cornice board, or they be can become a piece of wall art. Uh, and the ones that I made for the artisan program, they were going to be really part of the, the lambrequin. And I don't know if many of you know what a lambrequin is. And basically, a lambrequin is a cornice board that has, you know, long sides to it. And I'm sure along the way, some of you have seen them. So how many of you have made or seen lambrequins before? And how many of you made cornices before, too? I'd like to know um, what you all have done out there. So let me take a, a pause before I really get into the, the um, meat of tonight and say hello to everyone. So Kenny V, who's out there? We got Sylvia May. Hey Sylvia, good uh, to have you back. Linda Hatch. Hey Linda. I uh, don't have uh, uh, Linda Hatch's uh, no. whereabouts. No, are you new here Linda? If, if you aren't, forgive me. Like I said, that's why I'm trying to do this so I remember everyone. 
You hit a certain age. You know how that goes. Rebecca Brewer. Hey, Rebecca. And uh, she says my you're cousin. so talented, so she must have been talking about me because I was one of the No, it is my cousin. Or it was the film, film huh? I think that's my cousin. I know a little couple of Rebecca Brewers. I think this is, if you're oh. my Rebecca Brewer, Brewer, my cousin, hello. <laughs> uh, then we have Miss Missy Betts uh, Martin. Yes, hi, Missy Martin. Uh, Sharon Gregory. Hey, Sharon. We were just together yesterday. There's Bill. Bill Shagnon? Yeah. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Good to have you here. He's another talented. Uh, a man out there too. He's, you two were, in the, you know, you're pretty good with the drills and all that. How many of you saw the video before we started tonight of how this was made? Go ahead. I kind of interrupted the hellos. Okay. Well, it's good to have you all here. If you see others pop in, you know, Kenny V will let me know and you all say hello to them. All right. Okay. Well, like I said, depending on how these are made, they could be a Cornish board or um, a, an art piece of uh, wall art. These are going to be a piece of wall art. You know, I've got a lot of green in here. I love the island colors. And so I thought that I would make these out of this pretty, it's like a corally kind of pinkish um, vinyl. And I have used vinyl a little bit over the years. And last year, the big glasses that I made were out of vinyl. So I feel pretty confident that I can do this again if I remember every single step. <laughs> that I took, okay? Let me talk a little, little bit about cornice board so you can get a little bit of a difference if you haven't made a cornice board before. Now, a cornice board is usually, it's made out of plywood, and I'm gonna talk about the materials in just a few moments. But you know, a cornice board usually has, of course, a face, and it has, you know, you have your sides and the projection of what you need for your particular cornice board. Um, and it has, you know, a top dust cover and it's covered um, with fab batting and fabric and you can add cording and nail heads and um, just about anything. And over the years, we've made like three D's. We've, you know, we've cut other pieces of wood and overlaid it and just shaped them. And so, you know, you can do a lot with cornice boards and they are still very popular. And you can also add other uh, like embellishments over them like some people tell me sometimes if I can say this right let me slow down sometimes you can add panels over the top or under or you could add like jabos I don't know if jabos are still in I think they are they're trying to make a comeback but you can make them updated if you want to and add them over the top or maybe other little pelmets or just anything and you know and you can make them out of vinyls and leathers and all types of fabrics so they're I think they're versatile and so I I love making cornice boards uh, they're, they're one of my favorite things to make and the thing about it is too there's not a lot of sewing involved there's sewing involved when you get ready to make your cording and there's sewing involved um, if you have to piece your fabric uh, and I'm trying to think what else you would have sewing for but other than that there's a lot of stapling it's almost I think cornice boards cross over into um, the upholstery uh, side of our market wouldn't you guys agree how many of you all have made cornice boards out there before but anyway the, 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 how they, they're similar of what we're making here is that it's made out of wood. And I'm going to use techniques tonight, and this will probably be a two-parter, uh, but I will be using techniques that you can use with um, uh, co like curve-shaped cornice boards, okay? Because there are some really, really tricky uh, um, elements or uh, tricky, um, uh, what am I trying to say? There's, sometimes you get into it and there's little tricky spots. And you have to do something really special. Okay. Any questions so far? Any comments? Are we going to have a quiet group or are we going to have a real robust group out there? I think they're sleeping because I've some thumbs up. I've seen a couple. Okay. Of yeah. Let me know. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about the materials. And I, how, how many of you, tell me again, how many of you um, saw the video uh, beforehand? I thought that I would put that out there. So while you're waiting for me us to start, that uh, you could see, you know, some of the process uh, of what uh, went on behind the scenes to make this frame. 
Um, now, if you, I'm not going to draft the pattern tonight because each pattern for each frame or cornice board is a little bit different because of the size and the shape. But some of the materials that you, that I've used in doing this, let me get over my, to my overhead here. Um, to draft your patterns, you, know, you can use craft paper, and this is what I've used is craft paper. Or you can use a white, um, kind of a white paper that you get on a roll, like a packing paper, I guess you would find in the um, shipping department. You could use that. Or, and there are some companies out there that sell paper that is gridded and, ha and has little, like, I think maybe one inch grids on there. And that always comes in handy because it really takes a lot of the guessing out for you. you know, if you all watched a little video that I put out there a few days ago on the Live with Sandra V page, um, I talked about the beaded weight chain. And I've talked about it in other episodes too. I think when we did the designing panels, I spoke about it. And so if you've watched that, you already know that I love to use the beaded weight chain um, to, uh, to give my shapes. Because if you, you know, if you know you want a certain shape, and if you're going along, let me go over here. I got to fold in this. Because if you're going along, trying to get a shape, you know, and you just kind of maneuver it with your hands. And say you have a little budgie over here, and yes, budgie and smidge are my two favorite words to use in the workroom. <laughs> How many of you remember that? But you can just take your finger, and you see how easy it is just to uh, maneuver this beat it weight chain just you know and maybe if you got to poke it up or whatever it's just so much easier to use than to try to keep and redrawing and retracing your lines and so that is what i used whenever i uh, recreated the smaller version of these this frame okay sometimes we use it for entertainment we make funny shapes animal shapes and things like that we do not Oh, this is what I live with. Okay. Has anybody out there made cornice boards? Did anybody answer? Oh, come on, you guys. Yes. I know. Whatever. <laughs> Let me know. Okay. So, draft your pattern. And I had a little video out there on that. And the beaded weight chain. And you can even take uh, metal rulers to curve to get shapes, too. One of my uh, uh, worker uh, or co-worker years ago taught me that. One of the most valuable things ever is to take a ruler and kind of bend it. it gives you a great curve, even curve. Okay, um, some the, like I said, we are going to be using, of course, the fabric, and I am going to be using this um, vinyl, and I'm going to, as the main fabric, and then this white fabric, this white vinyl. I don't know. Let's see if we can get a close up. I don't know if you can see. It has some little like. Um, almost looks like, uh, I don't know what it looks like, tire tracks, small little baby tire tracks. Um, I'm going to be using this for cording, and you will see as we go along um, why I'm going to need the cording. And I'm going to cord the inner, um, the inner part of the glasses. I may, record, I may cord the top too, but we'll see. You like the color I've chosen? Let's see, I thought I'd bring some color in here. Recording. And I don't know if this is hard to see, but this is just some clear plastic that I picked up at my local fabric store. Maybe you can see, you can see the glare. And you don't tell me, I am thinking that I want to put this, you know, behind um, the lens area. I want to put it behind the lens area. It's I know it's transparent, and you can see the wall behind it, but I think it just give it that glass, you know, spectacle look. What do you think? You guys tell me. Yes, no? Maybe? And then we are going to be using um, some cornice board batting. And this is, oh, it's not very big. It's maybe a three quarters of an inch. And there is a difference between cornice board batting and regular uh, quilting batting. This batting, you know, if, if, as I pick it up, you can see that it, it has some firmness to it. And cornice board batting is a little bit more resilient uh, and, uh, than regular uh, batting that we would put inside of comforters or uh, uh, yeah, quilts and things like that. Okay, 
So that's what we're going, we're going to be using for this project. And you could also use maybe a half inch or maybe even a three quarter inch or one inch foam if you want it to instead of the, the batting. Um, I've not used that before, but I think some people have used a thin uh, foam for their cornices. But we're going to stick with the batting. Now, I'm, you can um, use some spray adhesive if you want to to spray your foam or your uh, or your batting down on the frame. And I need to have on hand if I'm going to be using a stapler. I need to have on hand. Let me get close up so you can see this. Um, the staple puller because nine times out of ten you maybe put in some staples and you might have to pull some out and then I have a needle nose pliers that sometimes will help me pull some of those staples out and I'm going to be using a pneumatic stapler now if you can see this is a long nose and I'm definitely going to need the long nose um, whenever I go to get inside these tight spaces now, Mr. Kenny V doesn't know this yet, but I found out this afternoon that my fitting is, there's a problem with it. So I'm going to tell him publicly <laughs> that he has a job to do. He has to fix this for me because when I plugged it into my compressor, it was, shh, so we got a leak. But it's okay because I have another one. Um, I will actually start off, I can start off using um, this pneumatic stapler. And this happens to be a Fasco. I think that's a Fasco too. This is kind of hissing too. And I will also have a uh, have a little pancake compressor over to the side. I've turned it off because nine times out of ten it will try to go off while we're talking, and it scares you. I know. Is, I, is Ruth out there? Um, hers was she, hers is down in her basement, and it went off the other night and kind of scared her. I think. <laughs> um, but anyway, so there are different types of. Um, pneumatic staplers, the long nose or short nose. If you're doing this um, as a profession, you might really want to look into purchasing a, uh, a small compressor. And the good news is there are some new ones out there that are not noisy. Mine's old, I've had it for years, and it is, you don't almost need earplugs. Um, and, and the pneumatic stapler, because you can use a, a electric stapler if that's what you have or you can use a hand one but um, you'll soon find out if like I said if you do you know uh, upholstery work or even you know something like this or putting chair covers together whatever then you will probably want to invest in a pneumatic staple and um, compressor okay. um, and of course we'll be using the staples that go into them um, I might be using some quarter inch ones if I don't want to go too deep with the vinyl so I get it set and I think the, um, the ones I'll be using the most will be the 3 8 And I like to take mine and put them in these little containers and mark the tops of them so I know uh, which ones are in there. I could probably look, but, you know. Okay, and what else? I think that might be it. I will also be pulling out either cane brick to cover the back of this frame later on, or I will use a lining. Uh, and I haven't decided yet because uh, you can use either you know so but I'll decide that later and I did forget, forget to mention cording we'll be using uh, I'll be using some cording uh, and be covering it with the white vinyl and again I haven't really made up my mind 100 to 10 percent whether I'm going to use the cotton cording or if I'm going to switch over and use some of the upholstery cording because there's different types and there's different sizes and sometimes the, the upholstery, what I call upholstery cording, um, it's, a, it's a little bit more, uh, it has a, it's a little bit firmer, okay? So, all right. How many of you have all these supplies or wish that you had supplies? Let me know. Any comments out there? Uh, no, you got Amy uh, Pitts uh, Nails. Hey, Amy. That's my cut, my niece. Yeah. Yeah, All right. Anybody answer the questions? No. We got uh, Jackie. Yeah, uh, uh, Roy just uh, started watching. Hey, Jackie, how are you doing? Like I said, if you're out there, please tell us your name, your business, if you have one. If you don't, that's okay. And also um, where you are. 
located city and state. So we're going to map this. All right. I am going to begin by taking my frame. And any questions? And any questions? Uh, and you know about the video too, because Ken's here and he can answer some of them. I just kind of put in a little descriptions. Um, but it all. You... It's not as easy as it looks. I made it look. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know how he had to drill that hole inside of here to get his um, jigsaw blade on the inside, so he could cut the inside of the frame. So that was neat. She okay. didn't want to have a. Uh crack in her frame at the beginning. That's right. Uh, crack in frame. Okay, I am going to take the um, the batting and I'm going to just go ahead and lay it down. You might want to have like a marker, some kind of a marker um, on hand as well. And of course scissors, right? That's kind of a given. All right, I am going to begin by taking and I'm going to cover this frame and I like to just take it. Uh, let me get an overhead shot here. Yeah. Oh, are we having problems with our thing? Here, hang on. Okay, we have a little bit of not giving me my overhead. Okay, so we can do this. Hang on, everyone. We'll get this. Did it? Okay, here we go. There we go. There we go. I knew we'd get it. Okay, so I am going to lay my batting down and lay my frame on top. And this will be my back side, and this will be, of course, the front side. Okay. Now this frame uh, I've, is 36 wide, and the longest point is 16 inches. And I'm just going to load up. Now you could spray this. This is where the spray will come in handy. If you decide that you want to spray your batting um, to your face, you can certainly do that. I'm just not a fan of the smell and um, it would be hard for me to take the camera outside and, and spray it outside. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take my gun and I'm going to push my lever and load this up. Who's getting snow out there? We are just getting rain, and I know the western side of the Carolina is getting um, sleet tonight. Sharon, you're getting some sleet. Bill and Kim, are you um, still getting snow, or do you have another bout of snow? And I think a lot of people are getting hit. Okay, so I'm. I like to start for, obviously from my longest edge here, and I'm just going to come up, and I've put in. Um, by the way, this is a 3 8 inch plywood. Okay. I think it might actually be a half inch piece of Half inch? Okay. So it's a half inch. It's all rough. Okay. So I'm just going to um, bring this up and I'm going to hit on my long areas first. And I, I really um, am going to try to stay close to the edge. I don't need to come way back here. I don't want a lot of bulk um, in the back. And I'm just going to bring it, and I'm not going to pull too, too hard. I'm just going to feel for the top. I'm going to feel for the top here. All right. And this is similar to what I would do. Uh, well, on a cornice board, I probably would, I would not bring my, my batting to the back because I do not um, want all of that, that bulk. Actually, it would be to the top. So I might cut my batting just to the, the edge of the frame. Okay. And I'm just going to cut to this here. Just to hold it. The edge. Okay. Bill says you're supposed to get snow tomorrow night. Okay. And uh, Jackie says uh, that it's just uh, raining. Just raining. Uh, and she's in uh, uh, Mississippi. Okay. Be, uh, down on the coast someplace because they're busy. Yeah, yeah, Jackie. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Co coastal coverings. Uh, yes. Furnishing. Yes. Hey, Jackie. How are you? No, we went. Um, you're. Yeah, you're down toward New Orleans, right? Louisiana, right? If you're the same Jackie, I'm thinking of. I, okay, so I'm just going to cut a little bit of this out. 
And this is going to be the real tricky part, right up into here. Okay. That's called a bridge. It's a bridge? Oh, it's a bridge, right? And this is where my, my needle nose would really, I mean, not my needle nose, but my uh, long nose would come in. But for right now, I'm just going to pinch it right here. And as you can see, now they've cut, I can just start pulling this, and I'm going to stay to the edge. Because I could avoid this if I wanted to glue it, but I don't. This is just, I, I can't help but smile. Okay. And let me start here. Jackie, you, um, I think you cornices, right? Of course, you know, Bill and Kim have done cornices, and who else is there? Missy, have you done cornices? I cannot wait to get these done. I think if I have time, once I finish this, um, I'm going to uh, make another shape. And put a couple of different styles up on the on the wall. Like, like shape of cow? Like a what? Cow, cow shape? No, no cow shape. Kim likes cows. It's all about the cows. No black and white in here. It's going to be colorful. Island colors. Probably don't have to put so, so many staples in there. Probably going to get overzealous on here. You do get carried away when you got the power tools. I know. It makes you feel like, you know, we're strong, we're women, we can do this, right? But then you got to take them out. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's why I have my tools. <laughs> Definitely have my tools, right? That must be considered part of your tools because sometimes I get the task to take them out. Well, if you're if you're if you're nearby and I need some help, yeah, that would work. No, let me go ahead and cut this off. No, let me put. I'm just going to trim this back here. I do hate using my really really good scissors for batting though, but. Any questions, you guys? What are you all working on? Uh, Missy, uh, Martin, uh, she mentioned Missy. that she always uh, enjoys uh, making corners. Yes, I do. I have always loved making them. You know what I really like to make, too, is I really like making um, uh, the shape bottom one. I like adding the, um, all the nail heads and things like that. Where are you at, Missy? Do you know? Uh -huh. What? Do you know where she's located? Uh, Missy's in um, New Orleans, I think, or Louisiana, or Texas? Missy, or where are you from? Washington State. Huh? In America? <laughs> yes, she is. Not in Canada. No. Well, you was going all over there for a minute. I have to, I'm telling you, I, I, it's like, it's a bit, I'm visual, and I have to, you know, sometimes look at people's names and remember where they're from. That's why we're going to have the map. So. Now, when I um, made these for the Artisan Project, uh, and you'll see that whenever I put, start to put the cording on them. Uh, whenever I did it for the Artisan Project, they, when I put the cording on, because it's vinyl, I had to make a lot of relief cuts. And it was almost like there's eyelashes in the back. And when I did that, I really wanted to um, turn them around. So they were fun, but I didn't. Didn't. What's everybody working on? Silent. Crickets. Come on. Baby's on board. Hey, David. 
His name's David. Ken likes to pick on or harass my younger brother. Who's going to the IWC with us? Who's going to be there? Come say hello to us. Or for us to say hello to. Well, yeah, I know. But we're probably going to be mainly in the construction zone. Um, and so I don't know how much, you know, walking around we'll be doing. I will, I will be doing some. Oh, Ruth, you just came in. Hey, Ruth. Now, Ruth is like a corners board queen. She can really put out some corners boards. Now, I, I should say, too, that there are other, um, when you make corners boards, there are other materials that you can use uh, versus using um, the plywood. You can use a, a, something that's called Firmaflex, and it's just pressed fiber, and it is flexible. And you can steam it and curve it um, to whatever shape you pretty much want it to be. And uh, lighter weight if you have a really large corners. Yes, lighter weight. And I've used it a couple of times, uh, but I think, Ruth, you use it a lot, right? And it holds the staples, but I think you have to go in. Um, I don't think it holds staples at an angle very well, but it holds them, you know, if you go in kind of straight with them. Ruth, you're the expert. Tell us. You can also use a firm flex if you have an arched uh, top uh, cornice mm -hmm. uh, or any other uh, type of shape yeah. uh, to create that shape because it is bendable. Yeah, it sure is. Okay. Has everybody made cornices? I will tell you all, though, too. If you've never made a cornice and you like to learn how to make a cornice, actually, I almost forgot this, that this, I have a video out there on Kim and Bill's uh, website, Kim's Upholstery, on how to create a cornice board, how to build it and put it together and then cover it as well. So if you would like that, uh, it is out there. And... Uh, Bill or Kim, if you're still out there, if you wouldn't mind um, putting a link in if you can. If not, I could do it um, later. But, uh, yeah, and I really get in depth with how to get into those corners. I know when I first started making corn sports, uh, the corners dro drove me crazy. Just crazy. Uh, because I didn't, I don't want the bulk. Um, I don't like the bulk along the top, and I don't want it on the back. So whenever it goes up against the wall, you know, it just, I, I want to take it out. Ooh, got a fuzz in here. And also along the bottom edge, when you pivot those corners, bulk drives me crazy. So I, in the video, I get real, um, it's really good close-ups on how you can master um, these corners both top and bottom, and how to add that band. So, yeah, all right. Okay, so we have the, I think it's the batting on. And if you really want this to be um, a little bit more lofty, you can add another layer of this batting. Or again, like I said, you can, you can use some foam on there if you want to. Ruth says uh, she always uses Firmaflex and uh, she doesn't have no staple problems. If you make a mistake, it's easy to pull the staples out. Uh, it's not uh, as easy uh, if you uh, made a mistake on plywood. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Like, I don't have a um, hard time pulling staples out, but but I can see that. Yeah, because I know that from, I should have had a piece here to show everybody because it is, it, it is really easy to take our tool. I don't know if I should show you. I don't know how many people have had to remove a staple before. And we have a lot of small posters out there. They know how. But you know, just take this little tool and just dive it in with a corner and pop out those staples. And then if you need the needle nose pyre, you pull them out. But with the Firmiflex, Ruth is right. They 
they just come out really easy. And like you said, Kim, they're, it's really lightweight. Okay, now I need to get inside of here. Let me get another close up. So I'm just going to cut. This is almost like when Ken cut the frame, uh, he made that little. Hole. You took a drill. What 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 did you use? You what kind of bit did you use? That was a wood bit. A, a wood pal, bit. Pal bit, you want to call it? Okay. So uh, I think I think it was three quarters of an inch. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm, I'm just have to be the one that was on there and was large enough to put the uh, drill bit or the uh, okay. uh, jigsaw bit. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that, and the thing about it is sometimes, you know, when you, you have to go into a, a build a frame that with curves, you can get as smooth as you can or get the curve just as nice as, that you can get it. But sometimes, you know, it's not perfect. It's wood and it's not exactly perfect. And so by adding the batting around the edges, it just smooths it out really nicely. And I wanted to show you all a trick, too, that I thought about the other day, and I forgot. Um, but if you need to fix a curve, say that this curve is not exactly how you want it, and it doesn't match the other one, which this one does match, because I've checked it. But say, you know, you just, you've got to have the little gouge, and you want to build this up. If you uh, use your a cardboard strip and I don't have any here in front of me you don't know where it's at do you to get me a cardboard strip um I'll remind me and next week I'll, I'll have a piece here but it's the um the little cardboard strip that a poultry's use and it's thin you can get it it's like maybe a quarter inch wide I believe or maybe three eighths wide and you can take it and you can put your cardboard strip um you know down and if it's a curve that you you know you try to graduate a little bit to get it higher um, put your cardboard strip down and you can glue it or maybe add some little staples to it then you can uh, or if you want to you can begin by building by almost like foam where you can I hope I'm making sense if it's an easy fix if you want to but you know how sometimes if you if you're building a loft on a cushion or something and you start with a, a smaller piece on the bottom start with a smaller piece on the bottom and then you go and you add another piece that's a little bit bigger and then another piece that's you know like a little bit bigger that kind of starts to give you this nice little um, you know graduation of um, it's sort of like the, uh, when I'm putting my makeup on I'm using that foundation to fill the cra cracks in Okay, you you stay in the command center, uh, but anyway, do you know what I'm saying? It, it gives it, it it builds it up without a harsh build, if that makes sense. And so, staying with the cardboard tacking, you can take and put a little strip, and then make a little bit bigger strip, a little bit bigger strip, and it just gives it this gradual build if you need it. She doesn't have that problem most of the time because uh, of the guy who's making the courses. I hate to tell him. But I have had to oh, right. budgied his budgies. I've had to fix his budgies <laughs> that he's left me with, and I, I yeah, mm -hmm. we've had discussions about a it. A lot of coaching involved. Yeah, a lot of discussions. A lot of discussions. <laughs> Mr. Kitty B. Okay, all right. So I'm just going to give some little relief cuts going around here, but I'm not going to cut. You know, I'm, you know, I'm going to be doing the same with the fabric, but I'm, you know, for the fabric, I'm definitely not going to cut too close. But it's just going to give me that ease. All right, any questions? Anybody else pop in? Nope. Are you monitoring? Sometimes he doesn't do a good job in the command center. Yeah, I'm monitoring it. Oh, yeah? Okay. All right. And I want to make sure as I come around into this, this edge. I don't want my batting to create too much bulk in my little corners here because I when I put my fabric on and my cording on I want it to push in a little bit so if I have to trim away the batting you can into this corner because remember it's going to be on the bottom side. How 
would you guys do it? Would you spray it on? Well, you know what? I'm thinking about that. And um, I think for this particular project, I really like bringing it around to the back because this is going to be exposed um, whenever this frame is up on the wall. So you don't you don't want the batting, you don't want the softness just on the face. You want it to come around to the back. Who's going to? Well, I already asked who's going to the IWC, didn't I? Who's going? Nobody. Nobody. Wait till I get this done and get some color on the wall. Whoop, am I out of staples already? Nope. I think my air is going down. Turn it on. Okay. I could go and trim it. Nobody said what they're doing tonight. Watch and learn. That's right. Inspiring. Bill, yeah, are you, inspiring. Or Bill or Kim, are you still out there? Because I know, and I think I can announce this, that Kim's having a upholstery meetup in late summer. And last year we went, we went to High Point, and this year. Um, we are going more into the uh, western part of the state, a little bit more, and visiting uh, at least two fabric companies. And so she has opened it up to upholsters as well as, you know, people who do home soft furnishings. And last year, I think there was about, um, there was about 20 of us who went in we had so much fun. We went to a framing company uh, business and we went to uh, Greenhouse Fabrics and we went around to all the little antique uh, stores and we had dinners together every night, usually breakfast together too. Like I said, there, there was like 20 of us and it was, you know, networking is so important and we just really got, had fun, you know, meeting people that we have only met online. Uh, and then meetings with folks that we've known before and just we just really had a good time you know we rode in the cars together and just I don't know it was just a great time and I'm really looking forward to it this fall too and Kim and Bill if you're still out there um, and if it's not full yet if you want to add a link that I would love that because the more more the merrier and I think last I've heard um, she has about 40 people coming, I think. And that's going to be great. Um, I was able to bring a ton of fabric. Um, I'll pick that up later. Um, and, and give it away to a bunch of folks. I don't know if I have any this year, but if I do, I'll bring it. Uh, I'm sure we got some we can give away. You think? At least I got, I know I got a bunch I can give away. Stay out of my stash. <laughs> It's in my area. Oh, it is. You better bust a move. Huh? <laughs> it's leaked over to your area? It's, it's been there. Oh. And you said framing. Uh, were you talking about for pictures or what kind of framing? No, uh, furniture. Oh, okay. Yeah, a furniture manufacturer, uh, inanimate uh, frame. Yeah, and the quality was incredible. And we actually walked through the, um, the plant and we saw them actually making it. And it, it was huge. And then we walked into a couple of rooms and just like all these frames, the chairs and uh, sofas, you know, frames were hanging from the ceiling. You know, of course, they were all over too. Uh, ottomans and just, it was, it was really, really incredible. It's very interesting. And to watch how they put them together. Now, this is, you know, definitely um, a company that has been in business for a long time. And I, for the life of me, I wish I could remember the name, but they, they were incredible. And just to see how it was made, how well it was made, I should say. 
So. It's all like some other professionals. They were. They were professionals. And then we got to go to see Greenhouse and Fabrics. And many of you carry Greenhouse Fabrics. And they are just, they're just the nicest people there, too. And uh, they treated us to lunch. And we got to go through their warehouse. And then uh, Jinko uh, Supplies. They, they sell a lot of uh, upholstery supplies like baddies and foams and, and threads and... Um, what else do they have? Any, just about anything. Probably guns too, right? So, but it, what I'm saying is, it was a great time, and I thank you for doing this. Um, it's not easy to get a bunch of people together and planning all that, but it it was just we really had a great time. It almost went by too fast. Okay. Don O'Neill is here. Who? Donna Griffin O'Neill. Hey, Donna! How you doing? <laughs> Where's she I got? saw you the other day. She's down east. Eastern North Carolina. She's a photographer. Oh, okay. I know she's got a couple good shots. She's always a couple of them. That's right. Okay. Okay, any questions? Any? We're not done yet, so share this out too. I'm back to keep going. This is definitely going to be a two parter. Um, yeah, you only got 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. I knew it would be because we still need to cut the cording and get it ready. Oop, I'm out of staples. So, Jackie, what are you working on down there in your neck of the woods? Whoop, had some more. Might have to turn the compressor on for a second. I'm pretty loud if I do. I'm running. I wanted to turn it off because mine will make you jump. Before I turn it on, uh, we will always yell out noise so it doesn't scare anybody else in the workroom. And you can tell when you start beating your ear. Okay, hang on, you guys. I can turn the compressor on just for a second or two. Earplugs. Hey, any other comments up there? No. Are you sure, you're not missing anything. Yeah. Did Bill with Bill out there? Kim, did they put in their link? Nope. Well, I will have to put it in there if it's okay with them. Anybody else wants to go? Is anybody out there going already? Okay, go. Okay. We have added the batting to the front of our frame. I wanted to make sure I pulled it tight because I want this indentation to show when I put the fabric on there. And then I'm going to have to, um, don't think I can get inside here with this, but let me see if I can. I don't think it's really going to matter when it comes down to it because the um, as long as it doesn't slip on me, there we go. And I'm just pointing it. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm just pointing it down. It's almost at a little bit of an angle. And it really doesn't matter because the fabric's going to pull it to the back anyway. I move my camera.
Okay. All right. Now that we've got that on there, it's time to do the face fabric. Y'all like the color that I've chosen? And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to lay the fabric face down on my table. See, it is a pretty color. It really looks bright pink on the camera to me, but it's not. It's real more of a uh, coral color. I'm just going to kind of center it. And then I'm going to begin doing the same, taking the same steps that I did with the um, the batting. So I'm pull it. And I know I have extra, but I can go along and cut it, um, cut it off. So you just staple it just above where you staple the batting staples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You can just staple right there. And I like to go ahead and do like say the four corners if you were the four edges just so that it you know just anchors the fabric and that's what I would do in a cornice as well is I always anchor my tops I'll anchor my tops and my sides and my bottom of course I, I would center my fabric if I was really making a um, if I was making a cornice board I'm just going to give us a little pull. If I was making a cornice board, I would um, center my fabric if there was a pattern. This here, because it's brown, I have nothing to worry about. Just so it doesn't slip side to side. I think I might wait on that because I might have to curve that around. It's not going to be as flexible as the uh, batting, obviously. Okay, so I know that I've got enough there. I can take this and I can begin to cut this right up here. Again, this is going to be the real tricky part. Okay. And anchor some of this here. So any questions? Anybody? We got quiet group tonight. Ruth says it looks bright pink. Yeah. Ann says it looks like salmon. Who said that? Which one? Who said it looks like salmon? David. Oh, yeah, it does, but kind of a little bit more salmon. Yeah. All right. Amber, she just says that she loves the color. Yes. Thank you, Amber. Okay. So I am going to start down here at the bottom. And I know we won't finish tonight, but if I can get one, one piece done. And this is the tricky part, especially when you're working with a vinyl. Um, and I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm going to just take... And I don't have a lot of uh, pressure, air pressure in my gun in my gun, because if you have too much pressure when you're working with like vinyls, if you're working with like vinyls or hides or something, um, a lot of times your your staple will go right through the fabric, and it would just leave a hole. Uh, so that's why if you're working with something like vinyls or hides, go ahead and take some pressure off of your um, off of your air compressor. So you to regulate the pressure. Regulate the pressure? Okay. Regulate the pressure. Regulate the pressure. So how many of you have used vinyls before? Now I tell you, if you guys are going to the IWC, and if you're not, I'm going to show it on here anyway, but um, there was one participant that used some vinyl. It's so much fun. I got to sew some of it. I had the privilege of doing it. I begged this person, please let me do this. And that person said, yes. Here, let me get an overhead view so you can see what I'm doing. So see, you're going to get some little dimples in here, but it's going to be okay. 
And because I'm pulling this a little bit, and that's why it was important to go ahead and anchor you know, your, the, the highest point of, of the frame that you're using. Like I'm just pulling just a little bit. And if I wanted to, see there's a lot of bulk here. And so I know I'm not going to pull it any farther than that. So if I want to, to get rid of the bulk, I can come along here and I can begin trimming it off. Okay. And I know I'll trim some more off, but... Ruth's asking what DSI do you have your set at? Um, let me see. Good question, Ruth. I have mine at the... Um, is it the 80? I have it at 80. That's 80 pounds of pressure. Yeah, I have it at 80. What do you normally have it at? Uh, I might have it a little bit higher than that. But it might be. I know it's at least 90 normally. Yeah, I think it's around that. I really don't. Not a whole lot different. No. And you see how I'm just easing it in. You just have to ease it in, like almost inch it in, inch it in, that it to curve. And I am getting a little bit of a pull. And just pulling it. And sometimes uh, when I pull, um, I use the nose of my staple gun and I'll push it. I'll, I'll give it a little bit of push. Okay. How are we doing on time? We just have a few more, minutes, I think, right? Yeah, my, uh, my fifth grader, I must have burned the battery on that activity. And so I'm going to pull. And see, again, I'm, I'm pulling. And because I have anchored, again, my other side, I'm not just pulling this fabric and just like shifting it all this way. Okay. Now you might want to make this out of a different fabric. I mean, burlap or um, just anything. Well, Bill's asking, is that a Fasco? Yes, Bill, it is. This is a Fasco. I have had this gun since I started business. And we won't talk any more about it because we could jinx it. <laughs> but I love it, yeah. And my my um, my long nose, I think, is a fast go too. Okay, so I am just going to go. There. So I think we're about out of time, everyone. So I don't want to run over. Um, so I I think I might stop here. Because what time is it, Mr. Kenny B? It's eight o'clock. Is it eight o'clock? Okay, I don't want to run over time, but you can see that we've got a good start. Um, and you see how this is curved nicely, and it's nice and smooth. Here, I'll give you one overhead, and then we're gonna up out of here. See it's nice and smooth. Ooh, that's pink on that screen. And how, how it's nice and smooth here. We don't we have the ripples in the back, but we don't have them on the front. Okay, everyone. I just want to thank everyone for coming tonight. And if I've missed, if Kenny V's missed the comments, I'll go back and answer them later. Thank you for joining us. And hey, Kathy Tucker and, and Ruth and Bill and Amber, Linda, Meeks, hey Linda, and David, Donna, <laughs> uh, and anybody else that I have missed. If you didn't say hello, Missy, and um, Jackie, Amy, Sharon, Rebecca, Linda, and Sylvia. And if there's anybody else I missed, I'm sorry. But anyway. We hope to see you next week as we continue uh, covering uh, this frame, this whimsical um, frame, glasses, frames, whatever. <laughs> okay, everyone, have a good week, and we will see you next week. <laughs>